Hello world and welcome to Elevated Intuition. Today we are looking at the energy of your next week. So I have some pulled some cards for you. I've actually already um, done the readings. That's why we have a we have cards out here and then when we get to the readings um, I am shuffling on camera. Um, and this is a pick a card reading so you get to pick the card number pile um, or object. I'll be placing objects here in a moment. Um, that resonates with you or that you were drawn to. So you use your intuition to do that. And then I use my intuition to then read the cards and interpret them for you. I have timestamps down below. So if whatever time you're ready to choose, you can take a look at the description of the video and click on that timestamp and go directly to that reading. So now for the fun part, the objects that we have. So for group one, I have this cookie. These are actually really cookies. Um, however, I don't eat them. <laughs> but this is um, group one. This is the bunny cookie. Then for group two, we have the um, pineapple cookie. And for group three, this is an ice cream cone or a cupcake. Because it's kind of shaped like a cupcake, but I think it's an ice cream cone. You tell me in the, in the comments um, which one you think it is. Also, I am completely open to doing um, different kinds of readings. So if there is a request, let me know in the comments. Um, let me know which, which um, cookie you chose, which if you like cookies, or if you want me to do crystals, or if you're good with me mixing it up, whatever. I'm really like interested in hearing from you. So if you want to put any of that information in the comments, please feel free to do so. Um, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate your kindness. I appreciate your comments. I appreciate any likes or even dislikes that you have um, because I appreciate you. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for being here. And if you're still not sure which pile to choose, we can um, take some deep breaths together. So go ahead and close your eyes and take a deep breath in and release. Set the intention that um, you're going to hear the messages that you need to hear today. Take a deep breath in. and release. Now open your eyes and wherever your eyes are drawn to, that is the pile for you. So it's just that easy. Thank you so much and I will see you at your reading. Hello group one. If you picked the um, bunny, you are in the, the right space. So let's take a look at the energy for your next week. First card we're gonna start off with are these oracle cards. This is just kind of like the overall energy for next week for group one. What is our overall energy or focus next week for group one? And this one wants to come out with the root chakra. The frequency of the root chakra, the red flower of life, um, stimulates passion and supports our sense of security um, on this physical plane, both in our bodies and as well as in the physical world. So um, even though the, this is red and it talks about passion, which is wands, we'll see what comes out with the tarot, um, it is also about grounding because it's the root chakra. It's our connection, our connection with the world around us, our connection with our, um, our people around us, our friends, family, coworkers, that kind of thing. Um, stability can be really, really important. This is also number one. So foundational, think of foundational things, think of stability. If you are not secure, what is it that can help you feel secure? So those are the types of things to investigate. Um, and then there, you can go off with your passion, right? Um, there's this thing called um, FU money. I, and this is, seems random, but it's, it's popping into my head here. 
And the whole idea of it is that you have enough money or you have enough wealth that you can just do whatever you want. So you have that type of security. So it's not necessarily that you need to be the next Elon Musk, but what is it that will make you feel secure so that you can um, go and find your passions? What is it that will make you secure where you can live your dream? Um, my husband and I often joke because the things that we would do if we won the lottery are the things that we're already doing, the things that we already enjoy doing. Um, so what is it that you can do to design your life in a way that um, makes you feel happy? And you have to have like a level of security to do that. Um, so that's why it's talking about the root chakra and security. Um, let's see what else comes out here with our tarot cards. So both of these kind of want to pop. And we've got, um, this is, okay, this is the King of Cups reversed. This is the Eight of Needles reversed. That's why I was like, what is it? Because it was hard to read. And then we've got Three of Matches upright. And then we've got... Um, 10 of buttons. Very nice. Um, the reason I say that is because this 10 of buttons is really what I was talking about. Like, how would you design your life or even just this week or what would you put into, um, put into practice? And it doesn't have to be big. It can just be little things here and there so that you're living the life of your dreams and what you want. And that's why I'm focusing on what I, I said that before here with the root chakra, because you end up with the 10 of buttons and that is what that card is about. You can see what it says here. Share the wealth, legacy, inheritance. So it is definitely about abundance. It is about wealth, but it's about feeling that way. And again, like I said, you don't have to be the next Elon Musk. You can just be a normal person, an everyday person. But maybe it's that you, you know, you have the time where you're not rushing to work, where you can let somebody in in traffic and you feel good about that. Um, just doing things like that does more to make the world a better place than all of these lofty dreams that people express on social media that they're never going to do. Anyway, I digress. So we've got the King of Cups here reversed. Um, it says heartless, unstable, uncaring. And the King of Cups, when this is in reverse, um, is, is those things. The King of Cups can be a person or it can be an energy. So for some people, the cups can be um, a water sign. It can relate to whatever our water, what are our water signs? Cancer, Pisces, I'm forgetting one here. I will, <laughs> it'll come to me here in a second. Cancer, Pisces, um, Gosh, write them down below if you have it. Um, Scorpio, again. Okay, so in a bad situation or in not the ideal situation, they can come across as very heartless, unstable, and uncaring. It's really interesting that I talked about the root chakra and finding that connection, finding that stability. Um, because when you're over here kind of in this well, really in this King of Cups energy, or you're, you're, maybe you're coming in across somebody who's expressing this energy that they're not, they're not caring about you. Um, you kind of need to then refocus things around yourself. I love the Eight of Needles reverse. This card is a better card reverse because it talks about um, imprisonment, but it's being a prisoner of your own mind. When it's in reverse, we're now starting to accept this. Maybe we're accepting this person and letting them go and not trying to impress them anymore. Or maybe we're accepting kind of that you have been heartless or unstable or uncaring. And a lot of times when you are unstable, when you're not um, from, you're not, you don't have this, the stability of the root chakra really working for you, you can come across as uncaring 
or heartless because you're just trying to find the balance within yourself or you know just the stability within yourself. A lot of people come across as heartless and uncaring. I'm gonna go with, with something that Jordan Peterson said. Um, he said that the best way to um, save the world, and I'm talking about in, environmentally and, and those types of things, is to lift people out of poverty because it's really difficult for somebody to care about the long view, about the generation, you know, what are we doing now for generations moving forward when they're really concerned with where their next meal is coming from. That again speaks to stability, what is going to make you feel stable. And a lot of times when we start thinking about the stability, you actually realize you're more stable than you thought you were. Um, and it's just a lot of perception um, as to why you were feeling unstable. Um, it's your own mind, not necessarily playing tricks on you, but you're worrying about things that are, are, are things that you can, either cannot control or do anything about. So don't, you can't let them affect you in that way. Or it's, you're worrying about like, every possible scenario coming off of any decision. And the problem with that is then your focus gets divided. And I kind of like to think about that. Like when we have these eight swords here, it's they're going in, well, these four are going in this direction, these four are going in this direction, but they're all hitting a different point. Um, you want to really then focus. And I like to think about these eight swords as like different worries or different points of view or different things that you're thinking about and everything is swirling around in your head. And you really can't get things done until you focus on one thing. And a lot of that does have to do with self self acceptance. Like you accept, wait a second, I'm, I'm okay. I'm actually okay where I am. Maybe it's not the most desirable spot, but I'm okay. And I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to move forward from here. Release revelation. Revelation is then releasing these, these negative thoughts that have been swirling around and really getting that out of your head because it's causing you to be unstable which then leads us to these next two cards, which are fantastic. Um, this is the three of matches and the 10 of buttons. Matches have to do with your passion. Again, once we start gaining this stability that we've been looking for, you can start going off and um, looking into your passions, looking into what, what it is that really sets your soul on fire. Um, again, going back to that example that I talked about where if you are worried about where your next meal is going to come from, you're not really thinking about, oh, should I be an oil painter or a sculptor, <laughs> right? We have to have a level of stability in that. The other part of that too is not necessarily even a monetary thing behind that, but um, having some sort of confidence in yourself that you can um, go after your passions. Because a lot of times people talk themselves out of doing things that they really wanna do. Um, Rejection is such an interesting thing. You don't want to approach people because you feel like you're going to be rejected. Well, the thing is that that's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? You don't want to start something because you feel like you're going to be a fool, fool when you start it you, because you don't know what you're doing. Well, of course you're not. That's the beginner thing. And we have to do that. We have to get over it. Um, a lot of times passion can help us get over it because if you really, really want to do something, you will find a way. And if you don't, you're going to find an excuse. So that's another interesting thing too. When I talk to people and they really tell me about, Oh, I really dream about, um, being a glass blower. For instance, there was a a girl I knew who really wanted to do that and she was really interested in it. But the thing was, she kept like having all of these excuses as to why she couldn't do it. But that's the difference between actually following through and finding something and going from a beginner to a master level is 
doing it is finding a way to do that. Um, finding a way that, okay, maybe that's not your main source of income right now because it can't be because you don't really know what you're doing, but can you do that on the weekends? Um, can you like really build, build or your time off? Can you really build the life that you want, the life of your dreams in your downtime? And don't discount, okay, well that's, that's just one day of my life or two days of my life or an hour here that I can dedicate towards that. Don't discount that hour. Don't discount that little time just because it's just a little bit of time that you're able to spend on that. Um, because what happens is that helps ignite the, that passion towards your, your goal, but it also just moves you one hour forward towards it. It's better than nothing. And there's a lot of times when we just need that little bit of spark to get us going. So this says foresight, expansion, and progress. Um, the two of, of matches is, is kind of that planning phase, um, but the three is, is moving forward with that. And what does that get you? That gets you everything that you're looking for and everything that you want. Now, I'm just talking about a week time frame here. So this, maybe you do reach some sort of really um, milestone that you're looking for within this week. Um, go, and especially if you're coming from this Eight of Needles and this um, King of Cups reversed energy over here, it, but it's definitely putting you on the right path. It's definitely making progress for you. But if you cannot reach your end goal, and sometimes that's kind of a loaded, a loaded thing is your end goal because a lot of times you get moving and your goal changes and moves and moves and moves as you go. Um, there's kind of, I want to say there's no such thing of, as mastery in something. There's always room for improvement. There's always room for, for more. Um, but it is at least setting these goals or having it in your mind what that looks like for you. What does this mastery of this, this passion that you're looking at look like? Um, can you have some goals that you write down? Um, can you work towards something in an hour? Maybe it is even just researching on YouTube that one thing. Maybe it's um, in the case of the, the woman I know who wanted to be a glass blower. What, a, what places near you do that? Um, and maybe you can't work as a glass blower, but can you volunteer there? Can you get in there? Can you like, oops, um, get in there. <laughs> I love this. Can you get in there and, um, you know, help them sell their goods? Because once you start connecting with that energy of what you want to do, you're going to, it's going to open up things for you. So two more cards here for you. We've got the Starfish Spirit, open to infinite possibility. I love this for you. So connected here to this 10 of buttons, the share the wealth, the putting that foot forward, and then you find like infinite um, possibilities. It's really interesting that it's the Starfish because I feel like there's like all of these directions here kind of coming off the Starfish that you can go in. Um, and I love that there's like a, like a mandala here in the middle of the starfish. It's kind of like, hey, but you have the power within yourself. Um, a really interesting thing about the starfish is that um, infinite possibilities because if you cut up the starfish, they will actually grow into other starfish. <laughs> so just because you um, get cut or um, pulled apart a little bit, Sometimes I'm speaking metaphorically here, not literally. Um, you know, that doesn't mean that you, you can't continue on and that there aren't infinite possibilities out there for you. And then we've got the squirrel spirit, believe in yourself. I love the squirrel here. <laughs> I just saw one of our, of our fat little squirrels. He run through our yard today. He really um, did well during the winter because he's already fat and um, I've just started seeing them come back out. But the squirrels, you know, when they talk about like squirrel away, when you take things and you um, collect them or hold on to them 
um, squirrel away some money, you're saving money. But a squirrel doesn't do this all at once. A squirrel has this end goal that they need to have all of their nuts in one spot for the winter and they keep putting them away and putting them away and putting them away um, just a little bit at a time like I was talking about here with the three of matches and then all of a sudden you have everything that you need and everything that you desire and you're gonna come out of it like our, my fat little squirrel and um, better than when you went into you know the winter so love this for you group one thank you so much for being here with me um, i hope that you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week thank you and i'll see you in the next reading hello group two if you picked the pineapple cookie you are in the right spot um, thank you so much for being here and let's see what we have for the overall energy for your next week. So this one wanted to come out and I'm feeling it. Okay, so it's interesting that it came out reverse because the cards are not reverse and that tells me something. I don't read this deck reverse, but it tells me something. Um, especially when this card is empowerment. The frequency of empowerment supports our ability to show up fully and completely, uniting us with others in the deep trust that we are all connected through the same source. So what I was saying is when it came out reverse, it kind of tells me that maybe you haven't been feeling connected to yourself, connected to source, connected to people around you, and you haven't been feeling empowered lately. Kind of have a feeling maybe you haven't been feeling yourself. Um, and I think that this week is where we start to change that. It's where we start to feel connected. Um, obviously, well not obviously because I say this a lot, um, is if you want to feel connected with other people, uh, the first person you need to start to feel connected with is yourself. Um, you need to start asking yourself like why are you not happy in a situation you need to start being the observer of your thoughts the observer of your feelings and try to figure out why you are feeling and thinking um, the way that you are and what is going on with that then um, oh and journaling really helps with that and then you can move forward and then to feel connected with other people and it's really easy um, to feel connected then too, because when you get into this state of connection with yourself and with source, and when I say source, I mean God, I mean spirit, I mean, um, I, I'm completely open to anybody's belief system here. So that's why I say source rather than God. Because God is source energy, right? <laughs> um, if you believe in God, if you believe in, if, like in the Christian um, faith, yeah, God is the source of everything. That's what it says. Um, but I'm again, like I said, I'm open to everybody's um, belief system because we are inclusive here, not exclusive. And that's kind of what the empowerment means. I mean, being connected to our community, we know that not everybody in our community believes the same things that we do. And that's okay. Um, essentially, it's the same thing though. When you get, get down to it, um, a higher power source energy. Um, let's move on from that for now. Um, so we're going to pull four cards here Oop. and one more for your next week. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, okay. So we've got Queen of Buttons reversed, strength here upright, which I think is really important. Um, this is page of buttons and then we've got heartbreak here with the three of needles. So I'm feeling like this queen of buttons reversed and this heartbreak are kind of the reasons why you may not have been feeling very empowered lately. Um, the queen of buttons, this could be a person or an energy. Same with the page. So self um, preserving, pretentious and entitlement. 
Um, it almost feels like there may be, this, this very well could be a person. Buttons relate to pentacles, so they're earth signs, which would be our Taurus, um, Capricorn, and Virgo. So that might be this, the case actually for some people. It's, it's amazing how, how much these relate. So if there's a Taurus, Capricorn, or Virgo in your life that is causing you problems, it's coming up here in the cards, but it's just kind of like an energy here of, of like this entitlement, pretentiousness, somebody that's feeling like they, um, that they're more important than you, that their feelings are more important than you. Um, it's really interesting. I'm getting this, this idea of selfishness. Um, when somebody else calls you selfish, it's usually because you're not doing something that they want you to do. Uh, so it kind of reminds me of there's a saying like when you point a finger, there's one, two, three pointing back at you. Four if you count the thumb kind of pointing back at you, but it's somebody's pointing the finger at you telling you that you're selfish. It's projection. They're actually the selfish ones. But sometimes that causes us to think, to um, kind of react. Like, and that's why I feel like the empowerment kind of came out in reverse and you're like, I'm not selfish. Or you, maybe you were even trying to make this queen of buttons reversed happy and you're finding out that that is just not working. It's just not working out. You can't make somebody happy. You know why? Because if somebody wants to be miserable, they're going to be miserable and you have no control over them. Um, the only person that you can make happy is yourself and you have to decide to be happy. So this queen of buttons, no matter what you do, isn't going to be happy because she's not happy with herself right now. Now I wanna say the queen of buttons upright, she's actually awesome. She's like a really amazing person. She's very abundant and she provides for other people and she's this really caring person. But right now there's something going on with her that it's not feeling like that way. It may even be you, especially since we have heartbreak here and empowerment came out in reverse. So if this is another person, if that's resonating with you, the thing is, is you have to understand that the only person you can make happy is yourself and you can't control other people. If this is an energy that you have been feeling personally right now, like you've just, maybe you are really in this self-preserving kind of mode. Um, and it's, not difficult to imagine a scenario where you would be given the um, climate of the world right now and the things going on with that. Um, it's just like the pretentiousness and the entitlement part that may not, may not entirely fit for you. Um, but you may have just kind of been in this little bubble where you haven't been necessarily very, very happy. Uh, and the heartbreak here, this three of needles, is definitely a card where somebody is suffering, where we're feeling sorrow, and it usually relates to not necessarily always a romantic relationship, um, but it, it can be where you're you're not getting your way or you're not getting what you want, and you know, heartbreak, any situation where you can have heartbreak, you go for a job and you don't get that job, um, that can be a heartbreak. Um, you are dealing with this queen of buttons and you're trying really, really hard and no matter what you do, you can't make her happy. Maybe again, we all get into kind of this downward spiral of um, sorrow sometimes. And that's okay. Maybe this heartbreak sets you off and you're the one who's trying to um, self-preserve and um, be better. And it's, it's, it just hasn't been working up until this point. Don't worry, that's what these other two cards are about. We've got some solutions for you. Especially, and again, going back to this empowerment where we are connecting with ourselves, we're making ourselves happy so that we can connect with other people. Strength, this is a major arcana card. So even though this heartbreak feels super relevant and it feels like a lot of times it feels very heavy, 
strength can overpower it. It is a bigger energy. It's a more major energy. It's an energy that is here, that is anchored in, not just for this week time frame that we're talking about, but for your lifetime, you need to remember how strong you are. Usually this card, and it's really interesting that we have a seal on here. I suppose seals can be pretty strong. We have a seal and a, a snake. Oh, on an armadillo. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of detail. Usually this card though has somebody walking with a lion and the lion of course you know is supposed to be is, is strong jungle cat king of the jungle right but the thing is with the strength card it's that person walking along the lion that is the person who is strong. It's usually like this quiet strength. It doesn't it means that you don't have to put forth this brute force energy. And um like this seal um with this ball balancing on um her nose that's that's finesse. That is um control, that's discipline, that's self-mastery. Um, and we're again, it's kind of like with this empowerment, we're looking into ourself, we're empowering ourself. We, we need this control of ourselves, control a lot of times over our thoughts, control a lot of times over our feelings. Again, you're being the um, observer of the things that are going on in your mind. That way you can ask questions about them. That way you can be like, wait a second, why do I think that thought that's been upsetting me, that's been hurting me, that's been making me feel like I am disconnected from the people around me. And then we've got the page of buttons and I love the page of buttons here because you know, we've got the queen of buttons reversed. We've got the page of buttons upright. So sometimes to move forward, we have to back up a little bit because on the scale here, we've got the page, the knight, the queen, the king, the queen and king, they um, represent different um, aspects of a specific suit. So like the king can be control over it. The queen can be the creative, the creating it, um, but still in the hierarchy of things, the page is below the queen. So we need to back up a little bit. Maybe we got a little bit out of control. Maybe we need to back up and figure out what it is that we're missing and why at this level we're feeling um, this disconnection. And this says endeavor, manifestation, and foundation. Really interesting that we've got foundation coming up here. Foundation was something that really came up in group one as well. So if you couldn't um, choose between group one and group two, they're very, very similar vibes, but you may wanna watch that, that one as well. Because the foundation here, even on the strength, we've got this armadillo. That's a pretty strong foundation to then grow from and to do this these fancy tricks that, that we've been mastering, right? And um, again, if something, like you've grown into, like from the page to the queen, like you've grown, but it's not working out right, Just walk it back, walk it back, walk it back, Let's look at our foundation. Okay, we need to, you know, you look at that foundation and then figure out, okay, is this something that I need to strengthen? Is this something that I need to do? It's not working out because my thoughts about this thing are not aligning, they're not right. Um, and this heartbreak and this queen of buttons situation are both kind of very, um, it's, baggage that you don't need to carry with you. So it's about releasing those kinds of things this week and finding that strength within yourself so that you can move forward um, with whatever. So you can move forward with another relationship. So, ooh, so you can move forward with another job. Like if you didn't get a job you really, really wanted, well, you can't like just sit there and wait um, be upset about that. You have to go go out and find your, find the, another job and you found, you know, I was going to say there are two here. Um, and that's okay. Ooh, ooh, love it. Okay. So we've got spider spirit, make your dreams real. And I love this because a spider is somebody who is, oh, oh my gosh, we have four cards. Okay. 
So a spider is somebody who, somebody is a, is a being, a living being, a living creature that does amazing things. I mean, they're this, this little insect, right? Arachnid that they create these beautiful webs, like silk is amazing. It's amazing that people, you know, discovered <laughs> silk um, from spiders and have used it. Um, they're very industrious and they um, just go and get the job done. Very magical. Grasshopper spirit, take a leap of faith. Um, so this again is, is telling you, you can make your dreams real. You take a leap of faith and it's all about moving forward. Mouse spirit, tend to the small things. Small, and it's really interesting that we've got juxtaposed here, the mouse spirit with the giraffe spirit, right? Because we've got this tiny little creature and this huge creature, the giraffe, but there's a reason for it. So mouse spirit, tend to the small things. Um, little things make big di make a big difference. Uh, in the case of maybe you are trying to lose weight. I use this example a lot because there are a lot of people I know around me that are trying to lose weight. It's, it seems like it's a struggle for a lot of people, myself included. Introduce more water. Drink less soda. Don't drink your calories. Try that. Um, go for a walk try that. And if you can't go for a mile, that's fine. Just walk around the block. But there are a lot of people who just, oh, it actually really reminds me of this story I heard about this guy who lost a hundred pounds. And the first step that he took was he went to the gym, but he would only be there for five minutes. So super interesting because what that did is it created a habit. And once he got used to just, it, he, the idea of going to the gym sounds like overwhelming to a lot of people because it's like, there's a lot of craziness going on there. There's a lot of clanking. You think you're gonna get stares from other people. You just don't know what's gonna happen. But just going there, be there for five minutes, be in that atmosphere not so scary. And then you have this habit that you've made where you go there every day and then you start gaining a little bit of confidence and then you start working out and you start doing the, you, you basically just dipping your toe in until you're ready to get into that pool and then make your way to the deep end. It's creating that habit. And that was a super small thing that made a huge difference in the end. And then the giraffe spirit, see the bigger picture. So the wonderful thing with giraffes, or the really cool thing with giraffes is they are so tall and they see the world through a totally different lens, through a totally different view than the rest of us. I love it, especially coming out over here over heartbreak because this is another story that I heard recently where this guy said that every time one of his friends or somebody that he knows tells them, tells him that he, they, you know, they broke up with their significant other, with their partner, he congratulates them and they're taken aback. He's like, now you can move on. Like, of course, you know, you're gonna be in pain or it's gonna hurt or whatever, but now you get to see your life through a different lens. You get to see what the possibilities are of you being single. And that is really powerful and congrats on that. So I love this for you group two. That is what I have for you today. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next reading. Hello, group three. If you picked the cupcake or the ice cream cone, um, you are in the right spot. Um, and welcome to your reading. Let's take a look, woo, for the energies of next week. And two of these came out, so we'll take them. We've got soul time and change. Very interesting. So soul time, the frequency of soul time, asks us to allow the possibility of a new reality to emerge. One that embraces the concept that while the corporal body is mortal, the soul is timeless, limitless, and infinite. So I love that. Um, and then change. 
The frequency of change supports our ability to gracefully dance with the forever changing nature of reality, both inward and outward, so that we can appreciate the sweet release of the old and the rebirth of the new. And both of these are very, very much related. So, um, one thing with soul time is if you are struggling with the loss of a loved one, um, I actually am right now myself. It is the to remember that, there we go, now we can see that a little bit better, it is to remember that we are infinite. It is also to treat ourselves in a way that we're infinite, that um, um, we're everlasting and while we may not have this physical form forever, you know, memories are very, very important, the memories of us. So, um, uh, you know, if you have any messages that you need to, to give somebody else, that can be important. Um, and then the timeless, limitless, and infinite. That is really important too, to remember anything on your goals or the things that you're trying to accomplish. It really reminds me of the quote about, and I'm going to probably slaughter this here, so I'm gonna paraphrase it. Like, if you knew you couldn't fail, what is it that you would do? And what's interesting about that is a lot of times we fail because we talk ourselves out of things. We don't even try. We fail because we don't even try. So I think that that is really important. Back to our change card, sorry for the interruption. Um, change is hard for a lot of people. It's, even if it's something that we want to do, something that we know, and in the instance where I was talking about where we have to let go of a loved one, I mean, we all know that everyone around us, unfortunately, at one point in time is going to pass, and we ourselves are going to do that. It is something that we don't necessarily think about or, um, even even though we know that's gonna happen, it's still really difficult to deal with. And even changes that we want to happen, um, sometimes things come up that we don't expect. Um, and it's usually those the, those unknowns, those, um, those things, because like if somebody passed from their physical body and you could easily have a conversation with them the same way that you and I are having a conversation, well, you're listening to me, not necessarily a conversation, but you can you can write in the, um, the comments at any time and we can have a conversation right here, right now. Um, if when somebody passed that we did that and that would happen, it wouldn't be such a big thing, but um, you know, you can still feel somebody's loving energy around you. Maybe the communication isn't as clear. Sometimes the communication is even more clear because you just feel love and acceptance from them in a way where maybe it was complicated when they were here. We have, that is the King of Needles reversed. Very interesting. We're getting all these court cards reversed for everybody. This is the Knight of Matches reversed. Then we've got the Chariot reversed. And the last card, the Messenger upright. Oh, wow. This is really interesting. Wow. Um, the Messenger is a major arcana card and it's treated as such. It is something that is specific to this deck, not necessarily other decks. But it is so interesting that it comes out when we're talking about this soul time, about being um, timeless, limitless, and infinite, that we have the messenger here. And I was talking about communication with people and our loved ones. Um, and then we get the messenger, which talks about spirit guides, protection, and divine signs. One thing that a lot of people go nuts over, and you may have heard it, is like 1111, or 333, or um, these repeated numbers are often signs, and they call them angel numbers because the signs from angels, or your guardian angels, or your spirit guides, um, just 
sometimes I take it as a, it depends on what I'm doing, as I'm in, on the right path, on the right direction, because that's something I, I question myself a lot. Um, and I almost feel like these other um, cards here, when they come out in reverse, is that maybe you've been questioning yourself. You know, we all know that change occurs and change happens, but a lot of times we have decisions that we need to make around it, and we question ourselves if we're on the right path, if we're on um, going down the, you know, doing what is right for us. <laughs> and um, one thing that is, is, if it's for you, it's for you. Another way that I get um, messages that you may look out for or if you have a way that you get messages from your spirit guides or loved ones or just messages from the universe there isn't really a good way to explain all of these things but we're definitely um, taking a step towards the esoteric here in this reading let me know let me know in the comments like how you get messages from your spirit guides from your ancestors from your loved ones from people who have passed how do they let you know that everything is going to be okay um, not only with them and they're not worried about themselves they're in a, in a great place they're probably more concerned about you and what you're doing and what you're going through especially when we get the king of needles reversed the knight of matches reversed and the chariot so there is a lot of energy here that feels like you're not moving in the not necessarily the right direction, you're just not moving at all. Stagnant, stopped energy. Um, and it could be because you don't know where to go. I know this says for the chariot, uncontrolled, reckless, and in, but indecisive is more of the direction I'm going with this because it feels like, especially when we've got the um, Knight of Matches, which is a very fast moving energy upright, it feels like it's just kind of a stuck situation right now and that there is a change here coming it's just not something that you're fully embracing or you could actually even be fighting it um this king of needles oppression weakness judgmental okay um king of needles could be a person this would be an air sign um gemini aquarius libra it could be a person that is being very judgmental or this really could be your own personal energy just going back and forth and over your situation where you are and the weakness and oppression is you you holding yourself back and i almost feel like it is going in that way with the chariot with again with all of these other cards that are here in reverse again though even though this feels like a tough energy this is a situation these are these are um, obstacles that we all face and we're going to get into um, how we can move forward with this and how we can reconcile things so impulse um, heedless and anger is kind of like with the Knight of Matches. So even though you are at this stuck energy, I don't feel like you want to be here. I feel like you want to make decisions, you want to move forward, but you know, sometimes we do just have kind of this, this stagnation about us. Um, and if you feel like you're not moving anywhere, um, whether that is physically or mentally it could be like a job situation where you keep kind of like and it could be even be in a relationship where you keep kind of like going around and around and around and around there's a there's a rihanna song that's playing in my head that that uh that's about that and it's about a relationship and around and around and around we go um where it, i think what does she say where it stops we don't know something like that um, cause like these almost feel like it, the chariot reverse feels like you need to pick up the reins. You really need to take control and, um, direct this. It, 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 it's time to do that. Um, this stuff, this, this, this negative energy, it, we're going to change that. It's, 
it needs to go. Um, and we do have cycles in life where this happens. So a lot of times we feel stuck and we have this, and if it doesn't feel great and we're here, this too shall pass. It's, it's going to pass. And even though it feels, what is it? <laughs> oh my gosh, there's so many songs coming up in my head right now. Um, it's a country song. Yeah, Rihanna to country. Like if you're going through hell, keep on moving, right? You just have to keep keep moving, keep on keeping on. And it doesn't feel like you're moving very fast at the moment, but your spirit guides are saying, you know what? You are on the right path. You just need to pick up the reins here. You're the one who needs to pick this up and take take it in the direction that you wanna go. It's no longer like this weakness um, and this oppression over here. This It is a lot of our own mind that allows us to be oppressed. It kind of reminds me of, um, I used to have horses, I used to ride horses, and there is this thing called ground tie, and you take the reins or the um, lead rope of the horse and you just like, place it on the ground and you tell them to stay and you I've, you do this with dogs too and you just they stay they they it's like they're tied to the ground but they're not it's not actually there now they may not have any need to move they're just listening to you they're listening to um, what you're telling them to do and you know usually you've gained enough trust with that animal that they're fine listening with you they're going to be rewarded they, there's no reason for them not to they know that they're safe where they are but in this situation um, where you are doesn't feel like we resist change a lot of times we're not in a great spot and we think it might be better over here. We're not really sure, but it's almost like the devil that you know versus the devil that could be. And a lot of times we do have to put in some work to, to make that change happen. And, and a lot, and we just are like, Oh, not going to, you know, I'm, uh, it's almost paralyzing. I'm feeling like in the situation where you're at because it's so, difficult, but really the difficulty is in your own mind uh, of where you want to go. And your spirit guides are telling you that it is, it's time to move. And just, if you're not really sure, be open to the synchronicities. Take a, take a, um, watch out for those things. Um, my, ooh, Buffalo spirit. Um, my grandmother, whenever I see an owl, I think of her. So um, I just feel like she's watching over me when I see an owl. If there's another connection, maybe with butterflies, a lot of people feel that. Um, even spiders. Spiders are amazing, magical little creatures. We have a... I try not to kill spiders in my house. Um, obviously, if, if it's it's going to be a health issue, I do, but or I try to relocate them. We have this debate because there's others in my home that don't feel that same way. Okay, and one more. <laughs> I was like, this is upside down, but it's not. It's the bat spirit. A rebirth is assured. Interesting that it comes over here after change. Um, Buffalo spirit, the abundant universe will provide. And I love this. I love the connection with the buffalo to um, Native Americans hearing kind of like that headdress. And the buffalo were like super important to, to the natives. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm, you know, the whole idea of a buffalo hunt um, that was a, that was abundance for that tribe, and they would use every part of the buffalo. The buffalo also has like that big, shaggy, abundant coat, um, so it feels like uh, just security, almost this warm um, security um, and protection over you. Where maybe you're not feeling it, but once you decide to pick up the reins and start moving towards this change, um, start directing the change rather than allow allowing the change to happen to you, um, you can maybe start feeling a little bit more secure in your decisions. And abundance is here for you. It's, it's So moving towards that is, do it, move towards it. And then uh, bat spirit, a rebirth is assured. So I love that it comes um, in this position here after change, because a lot of times um, to be reborn, 
um, we have to uh, we have to let things go. We have to let um, we have to release the past. A rebirth could be something like starting a new job, um, starting a new you know moving to a new home. Um, it, it can even just feel like in this particular time of year we are in spring. This is the rebirth of this cycle of this season. Things are starting to grow again. Remember when I was saying um, when we were feeling that kind of like sadness or despair, this too shall pass. This is a cycle. So we're looking for these things that are that are rebirth. We're looking for these things that are growing. And what allows spring to happen is fall and winter when things die off. Um, now it's time to bring that all back. Now it's time to grow that back. Um, and when you are the one directing your growth, when you are the one directing, steering the ship, you get to point that in whatever direction it is that is important to you rather than just allowing things to happen. And what I mean by that is like you're tending to your own garden. You're the one who is deciding what plants are not going to be in there, what plants are going to be in there. Um, so moving forward, you're going to decide what people are going to be in your life, what people aren't going to be in your life. If if this is part of the despair, if this um, king of needles is somebody who is like an actual person in your life that you, you need to release and let go because um, he's not there, he or she or they isn't there for your greatest good, for your growth, for your abundance here, um, that they are not here here for the right reasons, that they're not here for you. Um, you get to decide, the, the and it is up to you, it is your decision. You get to decide who's in your life. You get to decide um, what it is that you grow in that garden, what it is, what's, what you cultivate there, what thoughts you cultivate there, what skills you cultivate there, what direction that you want to take it, and how often you water it, and those things like that. So very interesting. I also want to mention that this bat spirit, um, because the bat is hanging upside down, reminds me very much of the hangman in... Um, tarot because the hangman is, is somebody who's hanging upside down and the reason is they're gaining a different perspective so if this isn't working for you if you're looking at your life and it's not um, what you want it to be look at it from a different direction look at it from a different way um, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater maybe there is some really great things that are happening there you just need to like tweak it a little bit or zhush, zhush it I, that's not something I say, but zhush it, um, you know, fluff it up, um, <laughs> fluff it up to the way that, that you want it, to make it look the way that you want it. There's some, some great foundational things here, which is interesting because um, in the other two readings, well, yeah, that was like bringing some things back to the foundation. Um, reading number one was you may need to redo the foundation. Here, I feel like you're, you've got some great foundational things. It's just building on it. And group two was kind of like pulling back to the foundation. Right here, you're at the foundation. It's strong. It's very strong. It's just you don't um, see it or you haven't been paying attention to it. It's very strong, It's it's but it's building on that um, and, and taking that foundation and into the next phase because we've got phases here. So I love you, group three. I hope that you have a fantastic day. Um, thank you for sticking with me and I hope to see you in the next reading.